So yes, I have those book reading glasses on. Are you ready? It is time to do a book review of Susan Mallory Delicious. The menu, appetizer, Cal Buchanan needs a top flight chef to take over his failing Seattle restaurant, The Waterfront. He can afford to hire the best in town. The only problem is that the best happens to be his ex-wife, Penny Jackson. The entree. Penny really needs the opportunity, but she doesn't need the distraction of working with her ex. She's sworn off of romance. She's even having a baby on her own. But before she knows it, the heat is on. And the attraction between her and Cal moves from a low simmer to a full boil. The rest should be, oh, the dessert. The rest should be easy as pie, but a secret from Cal's past could spoil everything. Maybe it's true that there are too many cooks spoiling the broth. Or maybe two is enough to make it irresistible. Now, it says on the front, can a spicy dish stir the flames of romance? I'm going to read the little inside cover to you. Sometimes even a world-class chef can't withstand the heat. It was one of the moments when good sense seemed to highly be overrated. What are you thinking, he asked. Nothing, liar. Despite the tension, she grinned. Yeah, but I'm cute when I do it. They moved closer until they were almost touching, and then they were in each other's arms, his mouth on hers. Several things occurred to her at once. The foremost thought of that man could still kiss like the devil. Savor the each mouth-watering romance featuring the Buchanan siblings. Cooking has never been this hot. Okay, we're going to move on. Sometimes there's a uh, note. Yeah, there is one in this book, too. Dear reader, welcome to the intriguing, exciting, sexy world of the Buchanan family. Delicious launches a new four-book series, so it's the first one in the series. Uh, set in the amazing city of Seattle, Washington. I'm a relative newcomer to the Pacific Northwest, but I was instantly intrigued by the beauty of the city and abundance of green and four billion places to get coffee. Seattle's a city of contrasts, old and new. Waterfront and mountains, casual and elegant. They know how to prepare fabulous food and pair it with amazing regional wines. With so much to draw from, my writer's imagination went wild and I created the Buchanan family, three brothers and a sister. A family empire of restaurants, an evil matriarch, and enough complications to keep everyone guessing. Oh, and the secrets. There are plenty of secrets. First up is Callister. You know him, or you know he hates that name. Who goes by Cal, C-A-L? He has the restaurant that needs fixing, an ex-wife that he has to go crawling to, and a sister he's trying to protect from the grandmother who's out to run everyone's life. Too fun. Although I couldn't make my home in Los Angeles, I'm very much looking forward to making my next trip to Seattle. Ah, the blessing of research. Please visit my website, www.susanmallory.com. I'm focusing on the Buchanan series. You can find lots of fun extras on the site, as well as previews of upcoming books. Now sit back and enjoy something delicious. Happy reading, Susan Mallory. Let's see. Now, I'm going to take it to the paper clips. This first paper clip is probably my favorite of all the paper clips because I like witty banter. I don't like seriousness when it comes to love. I think that you should have, be playful with love, that you should be able to crack a joke and laugh at it. You should be able to feel comfortable and be able to be relatable. And you'll see what I'm talking about with just these two pages on 50 and 51. You're only here for four months, Penny reminded him. How bad could it be? We're talking about Naomi. It could be a disaster. That's her best friend. Not for our big bad general manager. He looked at her. I don't think I detect reverence in your voice. This is my restaurant while I'm, while I'm here and I'm a god. I love this part. I must have missed that memo. Could you resend it to me? I'll bring you a, a copy myself. He glanced around the dining room. What do you think? She looked at his, she followed his gaze. It's fine. Fine. Do you know how much this is costing? Nope, and I don't much care. The front of the store is your business. He shook his head. You haven't changed. What happened when you open your own place? You'll have to deal with the front of the store then. I'll manage. Naomi has fabulous taste. Are you sure you won't want to turn it into some kind of shop? 
Penny considered the question. Good point. Then I'll take talk to Reed. I'm sure one of his former girlfriends was an interior decorator. Assuming he remembers which one. Another good point. You're on a roll this morning. He sipped his coffee. You're feisty. When did that happen? 147 days ago. There was a report on the news. I missed that. I guess it's hiding with your memo about being a god. He grinned and then smiled in return. Even as she wanted to lean in and continue the banter, she knew it was far better to keep things completely businesslike between them. Her former relationship with Cal had started that with fun conversation and had gotten more dangerous by the minute. Although she felt completely immune now, she didn't want him to take any chances, not when it was surprising, surprisingly easy to be around him. You've been out of the business a while, she said. How does it feel to be back? Good. Familiar. I didn't think I missed it, but there's something about a running a restaurant. Everything's changing with an no hour the same, let alone a day. Time is always the enemy. The next crisis is just around the corner. Sounds like you've missed it. Maybe I have. I hope you remember enough to keep the ha keep half of this up and running. Your faith in me is overwhelming. Cal watched Penny lean back as if he was separating herself from him. He could read her mind clearly as if she'd spoken. He hadn't had faith in her. That statement wasn't true, but he knew he wouldn't believe him. Believe, she wouldn't believe him. His attempts to protect her from Gloria, which is the grandma, had only widened the chasm in their rapidly unraveling marriage, which they were already divorced. Okay. Page 73. This is when the big, mean grandma comes and talks to um, Penny. Callister, he's over you. I'm not sure what he ever saw in you. Yes, I know you make that very clear. Penny pulled her arm free and wished her mother had been just a little in less insistent on being polite to one's elders. Cal might have let her go without a whimper, but Gloria had practically had a party to celebrate the divorce. At least that is what Reed had told her. Reed is the brother to Callister. You were never right for him, Gloria, said. You never even cared enough. What kind of woman walks out on her marriage? The unfairness of that accusation caused Penny to abruptly excuse herself. As she walked away, she found herself wanting to turn around and announce that she had cared, that she loved Cal with her whole heart. She would have done anything for him, anything but not have a child. Having a family of her own was the one thing she couldn't compromise on. Stupid old woman, she muttered and then grabbed a cup of bisque from the passing waiter and drank it down. I saw the smoke, so I came running. Penny turned around and saw Reed behind her. She leaned against him. Your grandmother is horrible. I'd forgotten how bad. No one ever really forgets about her. You just repress the memory. We all do. It's how we survive. He wrapped both arms around her and kissed the top of her head. But the party is great. People are raving about the food. I think you're a hit. Moving on. Remember, Reed's the playboy brother of the family. He didn't get serious until Lori, which we learned about in the other book. Page 102. No one slept with Penny, Reed said. It wasn't like that. Cal released him. What do you mean? There was no guy. Penny had, went to a sperm bank. You know, one from column A, one from column B. She picked the <clears throat> sperm out of the computer list. Crazy, if you ask me, but she didn't. Shereed poked him in the chest. Why didn't Penny tell you about the in vitro fertilization herself? Cal shrugged. Reed poked him again. You didn't give her a chance, did you? You just jumped to conclusion. Damn it, Cal, why do you always think the worst of people? I don't. Sure, you're a regular guy, ray of sunshine. You have to trust people to do the right thing. Penny never got involved with a guy who would abandon a child, okay? Cal stepped back. He didn't know what to say to his brother. Somehow Reed had gotten the right to the heart of the matter. That's what Cal couldn't deal with. The thought of a man walking out on his own child because an adult would have choices. Choices he had not had at 17. You're right, Cal. Good point. I, uh, ex thanks for explaining things. His brother leaned back against the desk and folded his arms in over his chest. You're pretty screwed up. You know that? Tell me something I don't know. We all are. Thanks to Gloria. Reed shook his head. That which, the thing she made us do, always threatening so many dang secrets, he looked towards Cal. Penny wants this baby, and she'll be a good mom. That's not the point, isn't it? Aren't you all jacked up because of Lindsay? Cal stared at his brother, unable to believe what he just heard. You know? He asked, his voice harsh with shock. Reed nodded. It had been 17 years, and Cal had never discussed the daughter with anyone in his family. Gloria had known 
<clears throat> she was always knew everything. While his high school girlfriend had been content to give the child up for adoption, Cal had wanted more for his daughter. He wanted to take care of her himself, but he was a senior in high school with no way to support a kid and let alone raise one. Then Gloria had offered. Cal could keep the child, but she, Gloria, would raise the infant. Every fiber of the being had rebelled against that. She forced his hand, and he'd given in to the idea of adoption. He still remembered signing the papers, how wrong everything had felt. He'd only been a few weeks shy of 18, too old to cry, but he wanted to. He wanted to take the baby and run. Only the kindness of adopting couple had allowed him to give Lindsay away. How did you find out about her? Cal said no one knew. Maybe no one was supposed to, but me and Walker both, and I both did. We heard you arguing with Gloria about it. I don't think Danny knows. She was pretty young. You just never said anything. Why would we? It was your decision. Walker and I talked about what we would do if it was us, and we agreed that we were both giving up the kid without a second thought. Easy to say when it hasn't happened to you. Maybe. Then it was done, and we figured it was your secret to keep. If you wanted to talk, you knew where to find us. What made me cry in this book? The fact that they both had to realize that they did love each other enough to let each other go, but then rediscover each other on was so beautiful. Now, what do I mean by that? While they were married, she got pregnant, she lost the baby. But Cal seemed to be distant during the pregnancy and not there for her. And he then said that it was probably a good thing they didn't have the baby when she wanted the family, which was what drove them apart. She left. Yes. But he didn't fight for her. He didn't go after her then. He didn't say, look, we can work through this. This is just a bump in the road. Instead, he was a coward. And he took the easy way out and let her divorce him. But then what drew them back together was really fate, if you will, because he needed a cook for his sh uh, restaurant. And Penny was the best in town, so he had no choice but to hire her back. But he didn't know she was keeping a secret of her own that she was expecting a baby through in vitro. Now, when it does come out and the conversation with Reed happens, of course, what we didn't know was that Cal had a baby of his own and was forced to give it away when he was younger. And he didn't even tell this to his wife, okay? And then the next bombshell comes down the road where uh, he's at going to move away to expand his coffee business and he hasn't told Penny this and it takes Gloria to tell Penny this and, and then boom it explodes all over again now the way it ends was very touching because a couple have to realize that there's no secrets when it comes to love that if you love each other you can't go confiding in other people you have to confide in each other oh, that was extremely wonderful and all I can say is this book gets a 10 I know not many paper clips to get a 10 but it gets a 10 so there's your rating and your book review what am I reading next good question I'm halfway done with it because it's a small book while I'm waiting on the other book it's called a date with fortune Susan Crosby and uh, it's a very good book and uh, you just have to stay tuned for that book review. Um, I did order Irresistible off of eBay tonight, so hopefully it'll get here in time, and I can give you that book review after I read it. And uh, there was a little preview in Delicious over here about Irresistible, so I read the preview, so I've got like the first six pages, I think it is, already read, so I can start just reading that book right away. And uh, when I finish reading my books, I always give them to my... Uh, I call her my f former co-worker because we work together and um, friend, definitely friend uh, Miss Wanda so I will get all my books together here eventually and call her up and say hey come pick up the books uh, she looks forward to reading too so gives her something to do as well then I always give my magazines to my work mom Deb so it's always like something's always going on you know what I'm saying I'm rambling because I'm not feeling well again tonight I'm hoping this ends soon with not feeling well but um, my PCOS is kicking my butt. That's what's happening. Anyway, I'm going to try and sing a song for you because I know that I'm song short. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 